Welcome to the show. We are back. It's a Tuesday night podcast with this week's special guest, Lusty Laura Luster. And you better get up here. Yeah. Um, yeah. How are you, Laura? I'm good. You better get right up. Yes. <laughs> I know how, how powerful your voice is and everything. You have to get right up on here. We'd like to welcome everybody back to the show. It's the first time we've gone live in I don't know how long since before Christmas. Yes, since before Christmas. And you've <laughs> you've been an active follower of the the beat uh, over the years. But um, what we do normally when we do one of these shows is I start off with three simple questions like, uh, uh, where were you born? Uh, how old are you? And uh, how did you get involved in DJing? So uh, tell us a little bit about that. Okay. I'm born in Jakarta. Yep. And I'm 32 years old. Uh huh. My birthday on 27 January, so you should come on 30 January. <laughs> and, Castella, I know those. and that's when you're 32 or 33? 32. Alright, so you've been DJing quite a lot um, over the over the years. I've seen your name pop up uh, on, you know, DJ lists uh, for many years. How did, how did you get involved in, how did you first start DJing? I started DJing 10 years ago mm. in Bali. And why? Because I like to share my happiness to everyone. Mm. And my music too. And the, the music, how did, how, you know, like, did somebody influence you to, to start uh, DJing? Yes. Where did the influence come from? When I sing festival. Festival, which festival? DJ Tiesto festival. Oh, which one? <laughs> In Jakarta. Um, I went to a Tiesto Festival in yeah. Jakarta. But how old were you then? It was 10 years ago. It was when I was junior high school. Oh. And I feel like, oh, so amazing to share the happiness, mm. the music to the people. Mm. And then the person like, so happy. Right. So everybody was so happy. It wouldn't have been because of what they were taking that night. It was because of the music, right? Yes. So, um, yeah, I think I was actually there that night in uh, Tiesto in Anchol, I believe. Yes, exactly, yes. in Anchol. That was a pretty good show, I recall. And so what happened then? What happened next? You you got some um, DJ gear happening? Yes. Did you I, have friends that were DJing? I have DJ gears and I learned sound and music too mm. when I was university mm. in Limcoping. For the Diploma Sound and Music Academy. All right. That was after Tiesto? Yes. Or before? After. Oh, so the whole experience made you decide to go for music? Yes. Mm. Because I believe in music, you can tell everything. Mm. That the hot air cannot describe that, but in the music can tell. Mm. So um, you... Uh, is it a spiritual experience for you, music? Yes, it is. Is it more, is it like a religion or something? No, it's like <laughs> the satisfaction mm. of happiness. Of making people happy? Yes. Or making yourself happy? I don't know. Mm. I see people happy, I'm happy. Right, so now you're, you know... Uh, 10 years ago you bought the DJ Jacks, you've got the, the studies. Did you work in Jakarta? Yes, I am. And uh, like where? I was resident in Jakarta. Which one? In Fable. Oh, okay. And then so many places. But that was, um, what genre of music do you play? I play Deep House. Back then as well? Yes. And uh, Fable, actually I think I saw you at Fable. <laughs> was that one of your first gigs or something? Yes, was it that, is. Was that, gee. So, um, I was there right at the beginning. I was there at Tiesta. I was there at your first gig. So maybe. <laughs> in in uh, Fable. Yeah, that's why we connected. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why you've always been a, a great supporter of uh, what I've been doing. And I, I hope that I've been a supporter of what you've been doing over the years. Um, which uh, brings us to uh, Bali. How, how, how often have you been coming to Bali? Because in Bali, I feel and I see it mm. 
like the people really open-minded with all the kind of music yeah and in here also have a different places to work not in the not in the nightclub only right yeah as in like the beach other... bar restaurant right. with the oh, entertainment okay. industry all oh, right so you can still dj in many different places yes and a different genre right right so it's uh uh you can play everything more or less I, you were saying yeah. you were saying you suddenly discovered hip hop, right? Yes, that was I a, learned pan, of it. I a learned pandemic it. thing. Yes, I learned of it. Mm. And um, you've never done hip hop before? No. No. So it's always been deep house. Yes, deep house and disco. Um, so what else in uh, in Jakarta? Tell me a bit more about Jakarta when you were growing up. Was it uh, were you going clubbing? Or no? No. 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 Why not? Because I only go with the festival. Oh, okay. Of the festival. No clubs. Yeah, I can can count it though. Yeah. Unless unless you're working. Yeah. Is that it? <laughs> so uh, what about your heritage? Your 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 family's from where? My father from Switzerland mm. and my mother Indonesia. Okay, so um, you have been to Switzerland before? Yes. 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 And then. What what happened? What what's the influence from Switzerland for you? It's so cold. Mm. Especially this time of year. Yeah, so cold. Yeah, yeah. But um, I don't suppose. Are you going there very often or, or not? No, last time I went there, ten years ago. Okay, so you haven't really uh, gone clubbing or discovered the music scene in Switzerland no, no. at all. Um, so what do you think about uh, Bali? How long how long have you been in Bali? Like based in Bali. I've been here for 10 years, mm. since 2011. Okay, so but that wasn't uh, working in music, I guess. What, what brought you to, to, to Bali, first of all? I start, I start here when I was working. Mm. So I don't know, like, I feel chill in here. Mm. Like everyone I can talk to and everyone just open-minded mm, it's uh, very easy to live in bali right yes and and also they put some respect on for who for everyone for everyone there's a lot of respect for each other yeah and they i find also here the balinese they let you do your own thing too yes so they're not really you know in your face about how you should be living and what you should be doing exactly so uh, that's always a nice thing how, how about new year's eve this last year how did that go it was a crazy New Year's Eve. Well, last New Year's Eve, we have a lockdown again. Yeah. So we have to celebrate with our own friend and our own family mm. inside the places for dinner and the yeah, yeah. house. So you didn't go out or anything? Yeah? No. No. No, okay. I didn't. Fair enough. Too. A lot of people seem to be doing uh, uh, their own things in their own villas, right? Yeah. Or renting villas to do it. And it's probably the quietest uh, New Year's Eve ever. Well, actually, it's probably very similar to New Year's Eve about 40 years ago. Yes. But uh, it's very old school with your family and, you know, your closer friends, I guess. Um, I had an interesting one, but, but it was down in... I ended up down in uh, Cocoon, which is called something else nowadays, and just arrived when, when the police closed the place right so some friends of mine were down there so we went down to see them and, and then they closed and we ended up they put us out on the street and then we're on the beach in front of cocoon and uh the 12 o'clock uh yes you know countdown came which didn't exist we looked at our watch and went oh shit it's already new year's and then it started to rain like like cats and dogs so it was quite a interesting new year's eve <laughs> interesting like it's a lot, lot of DJs cannot work, but mm. back again, I feel good because I can spend time with my family, with my friend, having a dinner with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, that's good, right? Yeah. So how much, how many family do you have here? Like, what what family do you have? Around. In Bali. Ten. Oh really? Yes. Your mother or, or father or? No, like my cousins. Oh okay. And your parents, are they they're here or in Jakarta or where are they? They're in Jakarta. Okay. Do you see them much? Not yet. Not much? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you've seen them, but uh, not much. 
Um, what do they think of you being down here in Bali? They support me. Mm. That's good. It's good to have supportive parents. Yes. And uh, yeah. So what about your love life? How's that? About, how's your love life? So amazing. Yeah. Yes. You making people happy again? <laughs> Is that? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> um, I noticed there was a lot of Russians around this New Year's Eve and since New Year's Eve. I was out on uh, on Friday night downtown in, in uh, the opera opening. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good on you guys at opera. Um, they opened, you know, very good timing, opening just before everything closed down again. But it was quite busy and, and, uh, and as I said, full of Russians. You know, it's definitely Russian week this week in, in Bali. Hello to all the Russians out there. We love you all. Um, what do you think? Russians? Is it the new Australian? Yes, because of this kind of pandemic situation. Mm. And now the, the government closed the door to foreigners to come in and go out. So they have oh, to yeah, stay. So since last... April, right? Yes. Um, but people seem to be able to get in on this B210 or something visa where it costs X amount of money to get in. But anyone seems to be able to get in. So that's like a little flexible rule from the from the government which is bringing some foreigners. No. It's just that recently I think they've, uh, they've banned English people. Yes. Uh, Australians. Um, and two or three other nations, you know. Yes. So uh, we're hoping this um, this next two weeks is not going to be too dramatic for uh, uh, all the businesses and all the clubs, especially. Because the clubs seem to be the ones that are being centred out in this whole two-week thing. It cannot it cannot be tell until when, but let the time process it. Yeah, well, that's all we can do. We can just sort of hang in here until... Yes, no, nobody's really know when it's going to be end. Oh, so that's a time tell. So what do we what do we do about it? What do, what do you suggest we can do about this? Well, take some advantage from it. Yeah, like you and the hip hop. Yes. Like me and the radio. Yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, okay, but you still got to make some money to to make a living, right? This is this is becoming a challenge for people to to actually make a living because this is now going into the second year. You know, not far from the second year as well. So, yeah, it's challenging. It's definitely challenging. And this next two weeks is going to be a little bit of a challenge. But hopefully it all comes better. Yes. <laughs> I hope everything gets better. Yeah, it should get better. And you've got a birthday coming up too, right? So that should make it better. Yes. And you guys who see this, <laughs> come on 30 January to Casera Noodles. Yeah, Casera. Casera is the famous new noodle bar in uh, Krobokan. Absolutely yeah. happening Super place. Super tasty. Yeah. It makes you want to go back for more. Yes, the taste, it really invites me to come again and again and again. Right. And we Thank just came us. and we just came from there. So you're not kidding. Um, and that's uh, Saturday, January 30, right? Yes, January 30, Saturday. Right. It's a weekend, guys. And it's going to be after all this uh, two-week lockdown, so, you know, there's no restrictions, apparently. Or we'll see what happens by the time we get there, but, you know. So what about, uh, tell me about drinking, because you, you've, you've given up drinking recently, right? Yes. So, <laughs> I have a drinking to someone that comes faster. You got a free drinks and free food and free entertain. All right, that's that's on January thirty. But what I'm asking you is about you gave up, you gave up drinking, right? Yes. So um, it, was, it was some sort of dietary thing. But how do you feel now after you've given up drinking, and how long have you given up for? Uh, uh, I did not drinking because I'm on diet. Yeah. And I did it for four months. Right. For the first weeks my mind like oh this is so hard this is so hard yeah and i cannot stop thinking of not drinking especially when it comes to the weekend or exactly you know? and you're going to go out yes how do you how do you deal with that juices drinking juice did you still go out yes you still go out and you yes. drink juice yes and eventually eventually you, you you don't think about alcohol anymore is that what happens no 
for for the first week it's happened mm. i still keep thinking on it right and after two weeks it's okay i'm getting used to it right. because mm-hmm. i need to change my mindset too and that's already four months ago yes and you continue now you're still not drinking no 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 now i'm drinking <laughs> only one time one month oh right but i remember you used to drink quite a lot yeah like, <laughs> sloppy old lusty <laughs> up against the bar <laughs> tequila baby <laughs> yeah you're the life of the party how how does that now translate into uh, lusty being the life of the party if you're not drinking do you feel that have to change the mindset so is no longer the life of the party yes so now you become the I'm, the the low key lusty i'm become better well better so, person yes i don't waste my money for drinking only no so what are you wasting money on now <laughs> buying supplements <laughs> <laughs> buying supplements okay mm-hmm. well they're pretty dodgy supplements going on around the place now i, I know that <laughs> um there seems to be a general lack of everything good but uh There's Lara. Hello, Lara. She just sent a smiley. Yeah. That's your Lara, I think. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah. So, hip-hop and the deep house. Uh, what's, the, what's the Bali music scene for you like? How, how's the Bali music scene? It's good. Compared to 10 years ago, for example? It's good, still good. Still good? Yes. Why? Because can show what the music, different music can show it. Mm. Well, no, you can you can play different music and people can appreciate it. Yes. Like that. Um, but it seems to have changed quite a lot, you know, over the last many years. The, since Chenggu came along, and, you know. Have you noticed that? Yes. And the whole beach, the beach club scene and everything else, it, it, you know, it seemed to be becoming a very sophisticated clubbing scene, you know, 10 years ago. But now not so much, not so sophisticated. Do you think so? No, still the same. Still the same? Yeah. It's still the same because I went to the beach bar beach mm. club right. and then to the nightclub oh yeah and restaurant it's still the same only at different hours right well the last year has been different that's for sure yeah. but uh, I guess I guess we're talking about I don't know what we're talking about really to 2019 I don't know 2020 seemed to be so weird anyway that, it's uh, weird it's hard to say exactly what was going on even though do you, do you have a favorite place nowadays like to play like or to hang out yes i have everyone's have besides where somewhere in bali <laughs> <laughs> anywhere <Yeah. laughs> no come on you must have a, you must have a favorite place yes i have all right what is it some rooftop something like like rooftop uh, yeah like a name does it have a name yes what is the name <laughs> Imani Rooftop. Imani Rooftop. Yeah. I like that too. I like that place. And A Loft. A Loft. Yeah. Where's in, that? In Batu Balik. Oh, the hotel. Yeah. And they've got a... Uh, oh, yeah. I didn't even know. Yes. Is it good? It's good. Mm. Does it get a crowd? It's it's, it's hotel, yeah. but it's chill, chill. All right. So you played there? No. No. Mm. For hangout. And what what do they do there? What when's the uh, even now or like in the last couple of weeks? It's been last, busy. Last couple of weeks. And only uh, only for if 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 they they have an event. Mm. And but the most places I like it is in Double Six Resort, rooftop. Rooftop. Yeah. F- to hang out. To hang out to play. All right. Yeah. Mm. And recently, you've been playing there recently. Yes. Oh yeah, and there's been a crowd. Yes. Mm. I haven't been there for ages. 
It's nice. It's big. Yeah. It's very big, and if there's not hundreds of people, it kind of feels <laughs> like very empty. The sound system is cool, oh, and yeah. last, 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 last time, the ML MLTR playing over there. Oh, the uh, the band, right? Yeah. From Michael Lansky. Finland or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've seen them before, but I didn't see them that night. They've also changed the name of Cocoon to Double O Beach Club. Yeah. Right. Which I think is a take on Double Six. Possibly. Because they are Double Six area. Have you ever played there? And they're also doing some underground thing on, on Friday and Saturday nights. Yes, I the did. The Space. Jungle Space. Yeah? And how was that? Okay. Huh? It's okay. It's okay. So everybody get down there this weekend, I guess. What's it? Maharani or something? It runs that. I don't know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're just the DJ. Ma I think my have any, yeah. You're the DJ. Yeah. And what sort of music do you play there? They play, they, they ask for underground, mm. something underground, so you can put deep house, tech house, techno, progressive, right. melodic house. And it's crowded? Yes, mm. because it's after party mm. place. Have you ever um, tried making music, like producing music? Yes. And? And I have my label. Okay. Mm. And what's a, what do you produce? What do you what sort of style of music is that? I produce techno hypnotic music. Techno hypnotic. Yeah. Is that uh, something that gets you in a trance? It can hypnotic you. Hypnotic. So hypnotize you, you. Yeah, hypnotize you. I know. That sounds pretty cool. Sounds pretty fun. And people can just walk in the walk into the club and get it yeah. for free. Um, but, yeah, anyway, so um, what else is going on in this town? What else is going on in this world? I'll tell you what. Um, um, anyway, what about the best moments of DJing ever for you? Best moments? My best moment is when i opening for MLTR. Okay. And then when I'm on the event of UC100. Oh, at uh, UC uh, 100, the drink. Oh, I don't know. Where is this? Where was it? In Geweka. Oh, okay. I don't know about that. Was it big? Yes. And also the, the beat uh, party where you were DJing there too during the yes. awards. I recall that over at... Uh, yes, and when I was when I was in... I'm very grateful when I was in the, the beat cafe. Mm, as well. Yeah, I that feel... That was always I a feel moment. I feel like I got second chance to play again. Oh yeah. Yes. Why? Um, what happened? Because I got accident. No, oh, that's right. And after that, I'm I'm barely to walk. Mm. And I I start coming to Bali again, and Mr. Stuart, the mm. first guy mm. who welcomed me to play. Oh, that's a thank big you. hug. <laughs> um, well, thank you. Thank you for coming down because I never you know really pay too much, <laughs> and always once your DJ decks. But uh, no, it's always a pleasure to have you in there. What about hobbies? Do you do anything besides DJ? Yes. Mm. I like hiking and rafting. All right. Yeah. Up in the mountains. Yes. Maybe that's something to do with your Swiss uh, <laughs> uh, heritage. Yes. Possibly. I think it's in my blood. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you, do you actually, or do you just walk? You just walk. You don't climb. Walk, walk, climb into the high mountain, oh, really? and then wow. and bi bicycling. Okay, that's another Swiss kind of thing too, isn't it? <laughs> I think so. Swiss family Robinson. Um, yeah. What about the nightlife? The the nightlife lifestyle. Like, um, do you enjoy that sort of lifestyle? Yes, I enjoy it. Is that a great motivator to become a DJ? You think? Yes. Like when you when you were seeing when you were at Tiesto um, yeah. back then, whenever that in Jakarta, um, you just fell in love with clubbing, or you fell in love with the music, or what was it? I fell in love with the music, and then when I press the music and the music is sounds good and everyone dancing, and it how to say yeah, it makes me proud of myself because I'm playing mm. a good music, so everyone. Like, ah! mm. Everyone connects with it. Yeah, right? so I'm connecting. Mm. 
So that's the way how I get connect with people. Mm. And you find that experience has been evolving over the years? Like you still get the same yes. uh, feeling from it? Yes. And, uh, and what do you expect? You know, what do you ex really expect to get out of it over, over the long run? I don't know. I never think about it. Mm. So I just enjoy it. What you can get now. Yes. Or, I, I enjoy it to share and I get to know a person. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But it's, t it's, a, it's a tough kind of uh, life too, isn't it? Being a DJ. Yes. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's you know not yes, quite working. Exactly. Um, how how do you how do you get through that? Is it have yeah. to to court to cooperate because the life entertainment is harsh. Mm, sure. Yeah. You don't. I don't think you can afford to be too close. You know so connected to it like personally connected yes you can't it's take hard. take the blame for everything no cannot mm. so rather than make an enemy even for us thinking better us to cooperate mm. so it's, it's like a win-win solution yeah, yeah. I, I also find it like with the restaurant business the and it's something i learned from the big cafe before yeah was you, you can't afford to get too personally involved. Yes. Because it, then it ends up controlling your whole life. And it's a lot better just to try to keep a distance and let it have it live its own life, you know. Is that similar with DJ? Anything? Yes, it's similar. Mm. Because in every industry, it's hard to, like, it's hard to put only ourselves inside the business like let's say we don't know exactly how about this how about that mm. how about a how about b so if we get connected like we corporate we know exactly oh you like this you don't like this okay i, mm. I make you like mm. this that's it within the music you're playing yes mm. but the trouble is when there's it's okay when there's 100 people 200 people but when there's like five people you know how 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 does that affect you because because in this how to say uh, in this industry mm. we're friend but we're competitor mm. it's like that sure yes with the other DJs yes with everybody involved with in the everybody whole thing. Mm. but you have a, you have a job to do when you go to a, a venue and that's to basically entertain people yes and basically hopefully bring people hopefully yeah um and like in this in this situation now dj have to have to bring people to have a crowd yeah so how do you build a crowd like yeah. i share my happiness my music yeah yeah but okay um but being a nice person <laughs> is that yes as like, nice as i can yeah but sometimes that, that doesn't work because everyone seems to be quite a nice person, but they can't pull anyone. So, um, do you think you have? Um, do you have a crowd? Yes. Mm. I have a crowd. And and why why are they supporting you? Do yes. You think? Why? Because they buying drinks. Mm. No, but what I mean is why why are they coming to see you and not someone else or so going somewhere else? Because they support me, support mm. me, and they like my music. Yeah, or like you. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's also part of it <laughs> too, right? You got to have a, the personality for for people to to uh, enjoy. You know, they they're spending your time with you, right? So, and the people you bring with you too. So it's a certain s group of people that people are attracted to. Perhaps. What about influences? Music influences. Um, okay, there's Tiesto, but since then, like lately, who have you been listening to? I like the singer. The singer? Yeah. What's the singer? Nadia Ali. She sang some famous house songs. Yes. Uh, She's the one who sang with uh, Armin van Buren. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Alright, so <laughs> She had a beautiful music and tone I'm trying to think of that song that she was famous for many years ago So guys, if you want to listen to her, listen to Rapture Rapture's the song, yeah, yeah. I saw her actually I saw her in uh, oh. in Immigrant in Jakarta She, you know, It's one of these ridiculous things where they have the singer come up and they've got a microphone and the guy the DJ's here and she's singing and it's like <laughs> <laughs> Totally whack. <laughs> but yeah, I like that song. I'm sure she, she's sung many good songs. But but what about hip-hop? You, you said you were into hip-hop. So yes, I like hip-hop. What's, um, what, what turned you on to hip-hop? Because I like TLC and Ja Rule. And mm. everyone's, when the music's hip-hop, they're dancing. They're dancing like crazy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They look like they're having fun. Yes. Right. Um, which is different to. It seems. It seems to hip hop seems to have become very, very popular uh, over the last five years, for example, in this town, you know, and it seems to have eclipsed and you know, become more important than than any other genre of music. Yeah. Which is a shame because I don't like it. I'll like just put that out there. Like for me, hip hop. R&B and disco, oldies and goldies. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Sounds like rock and roll. Never, never, never boring with that. Mm. Okay. Well, it sounds like rock and roll too. So it's yeah. like that live music sort of thing. Um, yeah, okay. I guess everything revolves, you know, like it yes. like goes around in circles. So right now I'm just seem to be into this total underground sound of the beat radio if anybody's tuned in you haven't tuned in yet you should be tuning in yes uh, the you beat, have to the beat radio barley which you're on right now um so what's coming up in your life what's uh, what's next for lusty well, laura luston for next i try to i uh, create the food business too oh yeah right. yeah okay dapur ajara Tapu Ajara. What's that? What's that about? It's the food business for me to to sell mm. to people and it's tasty. And it's a uh, it's already active. You're, you're yes, selling it's on active. Go Jack or something. No, 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 no. With Go Jack yet. What? How do you sell it? By mouth. Okay, word of mouth. And What's by up? Instagram DM. Oh, okay. What's it called? Yes. Apa. We have a paru. No, what's the what's the name of the product? Name of the food? Yeah, paru. Paru. What is that? Lungs, lungs. Lungs. Ooh. I don't know in English. <laughs> Sounds tasty. Paru, yeah. And, paru. and rendang. Okay. Very Indonesian kind of things, right? Yeah. Okay. Indonesian. Tasty. Food. And what you eat that at uh, lunchtime or dinner or? Anytime. Mm. Even at two a.m. Mm. Okay. Um, have you always well before you got involved in electronic music? What did you like? Did you like music before that? What was it? Yes. What? What kind of music did you like before that moment you saw Tiesto and Antro? I like something mellow. Oh yeah. Yeah, like Chilled disco, out. disco mellow, mm. like like poem poem lyric. Poem. Yeah. What's a pom lyric? Like something like really touchy. Oh, like an Indonesian love song. Yeah, yeah. On the on the top forty stuff. <laughs> yes. Okay. So what what are you gonna are you gonna try and incorporate that into electronic music or is that possible? It's possible, but not for me. No. Yes. But you're a producer of music. Yes, but not put that together. Mm. Because it's. It's called Koplo or Dangdut. Mm. Koplo. Koplo. Koplo is like the love songs. Koplo, no, the the love songs, but the beat like. Oh, the like Dangdut. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so it's Dangdut that you like. The dance, the dance, dance genre. Mm. But these love songs, Indonesian love songs that you hear every time you turn on yeah. the local radio, right? Is that the love songs you're into? Yes, mm. but 
I also turn into the beat radio and Sazam it. Oh yeah, you have to, right? Yeah. I have to do really it too. Really nice music. <laughs> well, it's, it's all the latest music, man. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask me where it comes from. <laughs> I don't know where it comes from myself. But uh, So you've been doing your own original music too, right? Yes. Um, two, two music. All right, and that's on SoundCloud? That's on SoundCloud, Beatport, Track Source, Juno okay. Download, Apple Music, All right. well, everywhere. Maybe, maybe we should play one. Yeah. Um, how would I find it? So on, on SoundCloud? It's on SoundCloud. Let's have a look. Is it? Yes. I better find it. So uh, tell us a bit about this music anyway, while well, we do find it. Um, not that one. Oosh. So this music is not really pumping. Yeah. It's hypnotized, it's chill. It's not chill, it's techno. Mm. And I was sitting in the beach, on the beach and looking for inspiration mm -hmm. to, f to have a good feeling to create that. Okay, so it's like chilled, uh, chilled out kind of music. No, mm. no, no, no. No? Not at all. It's chill for me, but I don't know. Um, what am I looking for? So search Laura Luston. Mm -hmm. Just beginning. Laura Luston. Okay, let's see what happens there. Bear with us, folks. Everyone's turning off. I can see them turning off as we go. <laughs> as we go and go. DJ Dion G and Ivan Delco. Uh, all right. Um, we've got Bali Pariah live. That was back then. Um, what have we got over here? Bear with us, folks. Just beginning. What, did, what was the name of the track? Yes, just beginning. All right. Well, I'm just gonna try this out and make sure this one's off over here. Uh huh. Just beginning in time. Just beginning with Laura Luston, all the way from Jakarta and been in, in Bali for ten years, playing her sounds. I'm sure many of you people out there have seen Laura on the bill. And behind the decks. Um, this is one of her own tracks. This is called Just Beginning, which takes us back to a beach on Seminyak Beach. Was it Seminyak Beach? In Batubalik, in Batubalik Beach. All right. For me to look, look in the inspiration and feel it. Gotta love it. Thanks for joining the show tonight. Thank you. Always great to see you, Lara. Um, Remember January 30th uh, at Casera. Yes. Come down for a drink. At Celebrate. In 5 p.m. From 5 p.m. Yes. till whenever. Till late. Okay. All right. We'll talk to you very soon. Thank you very much for joining the Thank show. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye.